Thank you, Matthias. <clears throat> so, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Mladen Mijatovic. I'm Business Development Manager with United Cloud, the company within United Group. And I'd like to tell you, everybody, how happy I am that I'm uh, telling you the uh, Android TV journey right here and right now, because this is the place where this journey started for us some two years ago. After seeing some very interesting presentations, we have decided to go the Android TV way. So, uh, who are we anyways? Um, United Group is the group of companies operating in Southeast Europe, operating in two main business segments, telecommunications and media, and operating in several different markets. First of all, we have several operators, uh, SBB, Serbia Broadband in Serbia, and operators in Montenegro, Bosnia and Herzegovina, and Slovenia, operating under the same brand, Telemach. We also operate the largest regional satellite DTH platform, Total TV, and we have worldwide OTT operations that cover expats from the region of former Yugoslavia, basically from Canada to Australia. We also have media segment uh, with our own content production, some 30 channels with various versions for different markets and different languages in SDHD and 4K. We have advertisement business and other media related business. And of course, last but not least, we run our very own development center with main offices in Slovenia and Serbia with some 100 developers or so. That's United Cloud and that's where I come from. So, to put it shortly, we are the agile workforce that is responsible for innovation within the group. And we are creators of this. In case you haven't heard about E.ON, E.ON is an entertainment platform that we launched first in September of 2017. And uh, this platform has been completely in-house developed, and I mean end-to-end. -end. So everything from transcoders, servers, streamers, catch-up recorders, CDN, all the way down to the apps that was developed in-house by United Cloud. And these usual buzzwords that you can see up there that translate into basically claim that we can present video on anything that can show video these days has been complemented by any network, which means that we cover for subscribers both within and outside of our own network footprint. We won a CSI award in 2018 for the best mobile streaming technology. And we hope to receive some more recognition because we launched our very own Android TV set-top box in 2018. And this set-top box is what this story is all about. So you can see that we have some very um, advanced user interface. We cover for 4K content. But these features that I'm putting on the screen are mostly interesting because of this first thing, seven-day catch-up TV. We have implemented uh, catch-up TV on all of our channels, even the most insignificant ones for seven days back. So these are the luxuries of having your own development and developing your own catch-up servers that pays off. How about the devices? Uh, any device claim to support it, you can of course go for the first screen device for the set-top box, we call Eon Smart Box, which is the main hero of the story, but we also have E.ON available on all major smart TV platforms. So you, have, you can have it on Samsung, you can have it on LG, and of course on every other brand of, of Android TV. For the second screen, handhelds, iOS and Android, and web-based applications with all major browsers and native DRM protection. If you allow for some bragging on my side, this is how this looks in real life. So this is the transcoding on the left side. HD, SD, radio channels, and some 4K content. And uh, you know, for the more tech-savvy crowd up there, I would tell you that not only that we do the uh, variable bitrate encoding, we also do transcoding for progressive and interlaced to accommodate for first and second screen devices. Again, one luxury of having your, your own solution running in the back. In the middle, you can see the, the streaming capabilities. So one day of E.ON put back to back in all profiles, in all formats, stretches for 65 years. And on the, on the right-hand side, you can see the devices breakdown of the usage of Eon app. But let's move to the main hero of this story. 
Once we wanted to have our new set of box, we were facing the dilemmas that I guess any operator and any research and development center is facing, which is basically how to choose. You need to choose your OS, you need to choose your hardware platform, you need to choose your content protection, you basically need to choose your technology to make sure that you answer your business demands. And the business demands were, first of all, innovation. We need to make sure that uh, our solution is the most innovative in all the markets that we operate. Second, advanced services. We were always seeking to introduce advanced services, such as popular streaming like YouTube, gaming, things like that. Always an ominous request coming from the business owners for the very short time to market and constricted deadlines. That goes without saying. High content security, which is specific to our region as the piracy is relatively high. And most importantly, we needed a device that is network agnostic. What does that mean? The set of box uh, needed to work in our network environment and our operators are mostly DVBC operators. So it needed to support DVBC, but also we needed to make sure that it works in all IP environment with FTTH, Ethernet and open, uh, open Internet, OTT delivery. And to make all those things work seamlessly with video transition between the two different networks is a challenge on its own. So, the solution to all these questions for us proved to be Android TV. We were able to couple our own service with GTVS, with Google TV services, and our UX teams were able to create a unified user experience to merge these two worlds. I will spend some more words on that later. So the box that covers for DVBC and OTT and works with, with 4K. What's under the hood of Eon Smart Box? Uh, it's a hybrid device. So the technology that we have to use was, we, we, we were having a constraint that we need to use the technology that will be covering for both DVBC and CAS. So we opted for a very strong hardware chipset for, from Broadcom running on 15K MIPS and coupled with two gigs of RAM that was delivered by our OEM, Kaon Media from Korea, and content protection from Nagra Prime, Nagra Prime Access was implemented into it. And we needed this strong hardware in order to support advanced services and all major streaming formats and video formats. We also strongly believe that the RCU is very important for good UX. Why is that so? Customers usually put set the box somewhere beneath the TV, sometimes behind it, and it's not a very visible thing. But the RCU is something that they hold in their hands. So we went to Tech for Home, Portuguese company. They built for us these very high-end RCUs in two form factors, the full one and the mini one. And those RCUs have some very advanced features. They have been customized for Eon a lot. For example, they have backlight, they have motion sensors to activate that backlight, naturally they have microphones, and this silvery shiny E button is particularly interesting, as you're about to see. One other dilemma, and I guess every operator who wanted to run an Android TV project is facing this dilemma, as Matthias already mentioned, is which way do you go? You want to go with the standard launcher that Google will give you as is, or you want to build your own custom launcher. We have decided to go the first way for two reasons. First, to save a lot of time and effort. We were facing some very tight deadlines for this project. And secondly, because, well, we actually asked Google politely, how about they allow for some customization of their own launcher to make it more suitable for operators? And they said, that's a good idea. So that's exactly what they did and what we implemented here. So full operator brand customization. You can select your own background. You can have your application pegged at the very first location. By the way, you have a second space here also for, for some other application, you have two of them. But the, the customers cannot move this thing, they cannot delete it, they cannot remove it, so it's, it's here for good. You have your very own Stripe that is always reserved for content from your, from your own application. And that makes things more operator friendly. Another important topic here is that you end up with two different home screens. So on the right hand side, you can see the Google home screen. On the left hand side, you can see the Eon home screen. 
But this is where those buttons come in place. To allow for, for seamless switching between these two worlds, we introduced this shiny E button that proved to be a silver bullet for, for our UX needs. Because it is very easy to shuffle between, between two home screens. Even if you're not an advanced user, if you get lost somewhere in the menu, you just press the button and, and that's it. So what was the result? We were able to finish the project in the record time, eight months only. And I can tell you the most of time and effort for that was this. Middleware and CAS integration. We honestly believe that this is the biggest challenge for anybody who is building the, the hybrid box on Android TV. In any case, we succeeded. And I think the, the most important thing that we, that we managed is to have our customers truly desire this project, product. Sorry. Uh, we sold 50K boxes in the, in the first three months, which is for the market of our side, size is a very good result. How did we achieve this? Well, obviously by creating some media buzz. So this is the launch event, which was actually launch events because we have four different markets for this. And we simultaneously launched the device in four different countries, same day, same time. In, in Serbia, in Slovenia, in Bosnia, and in Montenegro, we invited our project partners to be guests of honor on this event. We also got full media coverage and people from the industry and attending. So we created quite a buzz and drove much attention. So a taste of how we advertise the product. Have a look, please. I hope you like this. And as I do not intend to steal the show from the others, just two more slides, I promise. So in order to foster further innovation, uh, we were committed to promote this technology and to make this more well known among the developer community. So we have organized a hackathon that took place a couple of months ago in Belgrade. It was called Bits and Android TV Hackathon. So with some help of Google, we had there uh, almost 50 young people spend 24 hours brainstorming, coding, and generally having fun. And some ideas that came out of that hackathon proved to be very interesting to the point that our, our own product teams are analyzing some of these ideas. I'm not going to tell you which ones. And where do we go from here? So hybrid set to box, this is already done. This has been launched. The next generation of even smart boxes is being currently developed. It's going to be an all IP set of box. Why? Because we are shedding uh, the CAS and, uh, <coughs> and DVB integration. And we hope that this project will come in even shortest time. And we're also trying to achieve something that is more or less an operator dream come true. We call that hardware neutrality. What does that mean? Literally, what we intend to achieve here is to have a product that is virtually independent on the OEM selected and the hardware selected. And I think we're in a good way to achieve that. Why do I say that? The project has been launched with two different OEMs simultaneously and with two different hardware platforms and with two different SOCs. So one is from High Silicon, the other is from Amlogic, the new generation of X2 chipsets. From all IP set to box is just one short step to its younger brother, the Eon dongle that we intend to launch immediately after the box. And also in the pipeline, we have something that is particularly interesting. This is the 
our idea of operator smart TV, so Eon TV that is based on Android, which is currently being heavily researched. That much from me. Thanks a lot. I would, uh, I would encourage you to ask questions later on the, on the panel discussion, but feel free to write down my email if you, if you would like to reach out. Thank you.